Every week on Scientific Tuesdays, I try and give you something that I find cool and interesting that you can possibly do at home. This week we're going to be replicating the chemical agent that's used to bulk up oil when oil spills occur. You know, when the oil drops to the bottom of the ocean floor so they can collect it. We're going to make that and we're going to play with it. This episode of Scientific Tuesdays is brought to you by Audible.com. We're going to make hydrophobic sand, or in other words, sand that's deathly scared of water. But a nice side effect is that it has no problem with oil. Here's how we make it. We start with some simple beach sand. I hit up the pet store and bought some colored hermit crab sand. After we have the sand poured out into a tin, we need to apply a coat of Scotch Guard. You can also use pretty much any chemical spray used for making objects water resistant. You can get it at any hardware store, supermarket or big box store, whatever. You need to apply about three coats total. Each time, let it dry and shake it up afterwards. The active chemical agent here is called perfluorobutane sulfonic acid, which basically helps create a surface that is difficult for water molecules to adhere to because it has a low polarity. All right, so we have it created. Let's see what it can do. As I mentioned before, by coating the sand with hydrophobic chemicals, we essentially have thousands of tiny grains that are water resistant. That being said, when we apply a small drop of water to the compound, you can see that it quickly beads up and stays on top. You can easily make little water designs with this stuff, or just roll the water droplets around until you've had enough. But what's going to happen if we just pour the sand straight into the water? When the compound is surrounded and enveloped by water, all the grains stick together and bulk up to create a smaller surface area. The effect is pretty cool. Here, let's check it out from another angle. Now, I made a couple batches of this stuff in yellow and green. After the yellow's played out, let's go ahead and add another layer of green to it. Now, if you want to reclaim the sand, it's very simple. Dump the excess water down the drain, put a couple paper towels down, and pour it right on top. The sand will come out perfectly dry. Now comes my favorite part. I mixed a little food coloring with some olive oil just to give you a good example of how this works. When we pour the sand into the oil, it takes it down to the bottom with it. Pretty cool. Basically, the sand is able to combine with the oil and make it heavy enough to float down to the bottom and become a near solid substance. This is actually the reason this substance was created in the first place. While the hydrophobic sand won't bond to water, it will to oil. Pretty awesome. Sometimes though, there just isn't enough bonding action going on. As you can see here, if I flick the glass, this bit of oil is going to float right back up to the top. Sponsors are awesome because they help keep this whole science thing going. So I want to thank Audible.com this week. They're the biggest provider of downloadable audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 75,000 titles to choose from that you can download to your iPod or your MP3 player and play back anytime, anywhere. They've got all kinds of genres available for download, like science fiction, thrillers, drama, even comedy. Now, I drive a lot and I have to make a lot of road trips, and my favorite thing to do is grab a book from audible.com the night before and listen to it during the entire drive. Right now I'm going through the Song of Ice and Fire series since it just started on HBO and I sort of want to get ahead and know the spoilers before they occur. You can check this out for yourself for free. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash Tuesdays and you can get a free audiobook to check out for yourself. I hope you enjoyed making your sand afraid of water and we'll see you next week.